Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're going to go into transfer gossip and rumours. As it's um, another 72 hours until the transfer window closes at 11pm um, on Friday. Then we're going to go in to the player ratings on this review. But first we'll talk about the game itself. For me, first half was exceptional. Fantastic build up to both goals, especially the second one. But the first one was a very good goal by um, Bakari Saka, who is only fitting in as an emergency left back. But for me, he gave an example of how to play and perform as an emergency left back. Only 18. And it was said by Robbie um, Lyle that him, Enketia, Guendouzi and Martinelli, the four of them have not passed 21. And boy, I think we need more teenagers to break through the, the youth ranks from keeper to attack. I would love to see more youth breaking through. What a future we will have. And under the management at present, he's got us sticking to our guns and the principle is there to be seen. You muck about in training, you get punished. You don't do what he wants you to do or what you should what you should supposed to be doing, he will punish you. And that's what we can see when we look at him in a dugout. He's picked the right team, the formation worked to a treat. We outclassed Bournemouth for the bulk of that first half. Outclassed them. There was a time they couldn't even get a kick. Second goal. It's gotta be my favourite goal. The the 23 odd passes Bournemouth had no chance and um, one Nigerian guy that I um, that I watched here on the um, International Gooners he said it he said it completely clear that Skodra Mustafi's done more forward passes than Ozil I rest my case yeah, but on back to the second goal. What a goal! What a good team goal. I mean, Saka not only scored a quality goal, but he set up a beautiful goal for, uh, or a beautiful finish by Eddie Nketiah. And I've liked Nketiah from day one. From when I saw him scoring goals against Norwich to get us out of a pickle against Championship Norwich, I realised we've got one hell of a striker. We need to look after him and if we loan him, make sure he gets first team regular football because he will score regularly and regularly he does score goals. He lives in the box. Off the ball, he, he and, and amongst a number of Arsenal players buy into the Arteta's philosophy of closing the ball down with the intensity with determination and with fight and that is exactly what we're looking at looking like that team who are showing fight and intensity off the ball and what we need to do is add the additions and I'll come on to transfer um, shortly second half we just managed the game up until the 94th minute of stoppage time where we conceded a goal but we managed the game it would have been nice to create more chances on goal but we had you know but Bournemouth did come back into it and they showed some fight. And they had to in front of their home crowd. They needed to show some fight. Because the first half was totally unacceptable from Bournemouth's part. However, they did show some fight. And um, yeah, they got the consolation. Which could have been rocky. Especially when 8 minutes of stoppage time went up. That, due to the injuries. I thought, from our part, Grindosi was just taking the liberty. Going down too easily. And... Um, we managed to get the job done and we're going to Portsmouth, which is not too far away from Bournemouth, that nick of the woods. And uh, I am pleased that we've got a victory. It's nice to win again. Breeds confidence, breeds, 
it brings the winning mentality back into the squad. And um, we look forward to the next ch um, chapter, which is Burnley on Sunday, 2 o'clock, live on Sky Sports. And then Tottenham go to Man City or the other way around. Who cares? Anyway, right. I've spoken about um, my, um, about um, my review on the, of the game and my reflection of the game. And um, yeah, first half, terrific. Not so gr not so controlling in the second half. But again, we made sure we didn't um, concede too many chances, and that's the difference between Arteta and the two previous management that we've had, with all due respect to Jumberg, we were going to always concede chances under him and we look vulnerable. Defensively, we've looked a lot better under Eteta, although it would have been nice to keep a clean sheet. However, we talk about the transfer situation with Pablo Mari from Spain. He's a Spaniard who plays for Flamengo who played in the Club World Cup v Liverpool and um, I thought he had a good game. You know, I felt he had a good game against the Liverpool attack. He did as well as he could. Um, I've not, I've only seen him in one game and that was the final of the Club World Cup final, which I've just said. He, he had a good game and he enjoyed himself, but he didn't enjoy it. Not as enjoyable as um, losing a club World Cup final to Liverpool. You know, who who seem to be winning everything at the moment, even the Premier League title coming their way. Um, yeah, Pablo Mari, six foot three, left footed centre half. I don't know how quick he is. Commanding in the air. Commanding as a voice on the pitch. And that's a voice that we do need. You know, a voice of a leader, and he has that in abundance. So, um, yeah, I'll be pleased to see him signed. But although, sadly, there's some cock-ups with the terms. We don't know if Arsenal are mucking about with the money, not paying the fee that he's asked for. It's another friggin' mess in our dark chapter of boardroom management. It's disgusting. No, it's despicable. And it makes me so angry. So goddamn friggin' angry. Seriously. What is wrong with our board? Why can't we get this deal over the line? Even if it's a loan to a permanent deal, let's get it done over the line. We've got 72 hours to complete one or two signings. I mean, a lot happens on transfer deadline day. But it's not the summer version. It's the January version. Should I say the winter version? Should I put it as? And that's the problem with Arsenal. You know? Alright. We pay a fee. We've got to make sure his wages are covered in that fee. Depending on how much we got in the budget. Or if we've got any money in the budget. You know. And this is the wonders of Stan Kroenke. Every time we want a player. It's never going to be straightforward. It's never going to be basic. It's always talks. With his board of directors. What are they doing? I mean he was here Murray. At London Colney it was reported. He was there. Spoke to Arteta. And since then, he's gone back to Brazil. And he apparently sounds desperate to come to Arsenal. Come and prove himself in the Premier League where he never got that opportunity while he was at Manchester City for three years. So he went on loan to do two different clubs. One of them being NAC Breda in Holland, the Eredivisie League. And um, he just never got going from there so eventually he was sold out of Europe to Flamengo and um, 
he's been a first team regular. And now Arsenal are trying to get him in because we are short of centre backs. Mustafi is out, but not for as long as first feared. So that is positive news for us. Uh, I can tell you that Socrates has just come back from injury. Holding came on and did really well, as well as he could. And David Lewis was suspended for this game, but I think he could come back for the game against Burnley, but I'm not too sure on that. Um, if anyone knows concretely, then leave your thoughts, your message, whatever opinion you have at the bottom of the screen, yeah? And that's the comment section, yeah? Leave your comments below, as they all say. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying now. And please, if you're enjoying this video and this talk, smash the thumbs up. And I demand you to smash the thumbs up. Damn, I'm spitting all over my camera. That's the passion of being an Arsenal fan. Natty. <laughs> um, yeah, smash the thumbs up. And please subscribe. Definitely subscribe to DLG Repping. Yeah? Right. Uh, last but not least, I want to go on to... No, no, I haven't finished with transfers yet. I'm still still um, skeeving over the, the, the Mary saga. And it's another saga. Just like uh, Matt Vienko of um, Dinamo... No, um, Shot to Donetsk, sorry. Of Ukraine. Well, that, that was in talks and I don't know what's happened ever since. Can't say if he's definitely coming or not coming. Don't, it, well, it don't seem like he's coming to me. I want to be proven wrong. But um, I will go with Marie. And in the summer, I still think we've got every chance of signing Upper Marcano. He hasn't extended his contract. He's got 18 months left. His prize fee could be 40, 50 million. That shouldn't be a problem for Arsenal. And in the summer, it seems to me that they would rather spend the money there than spend it in this month. And I know January is a tough month. I keep reiterating that. January is a tough month to bring in summer signings. Uh, gen um, bring in signings. Summer signings, yeah. <laughs> summer signings in January. <laughs> Although the sun's been out, but not quite the summer. But it is um, very difficult to bring in recruitment. However, um, we will... Hopefully, be active in the summer. And Arteta has made it clear that he is looking to strengthen at the back. He said he wanted two centre-halves. He said he wanted a competitive midfielder. So, in the long run, I think we will get them. <clears throat> I mean, he's done a fantastic job with working with what he's got. I mean, the job that he's done in eight games has been magnificent. One defeat in eight games, three wins, four draws... So we're not doing too badly. All right, one league win. And it was against Scumchester United. Or should I say, Laughchester Laugh United. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, I'll say it again. Laughchester United. Yeah. I hope you're not, I hope you're not listening to um, Rants and Bants and Flex. Yeah, I'm talking to you guys. Your boys took one hell of a licking. Anyway. Uh... Enough of that. And um, I've heard of recently that, um, yeah, back to transfers. I've heard that recently, as we go back to transfers, Emre Chan was being linked with us. But for me, I don't think it's concrete. I don't see him being an Arsenal player for the simple fact that he's got his heart set back in Germany and Borussia Dortmund are likely favourites for his signature. I mean, that wouldn't have been a, a bad of a signing. I mean, we've had Frank Kezi being linked, Thomas Lamar being linked for a loan, possible deadline deal. Frank Kezi, that's a dark one there. Who knows what's going to happen with him? I mean, AC Milan, I don't think they want to sell him this month. So it could be a summer move. It could be an ideal situation. But I'm sure Arteta is looking at him. I think he's a type of player that Arteta wants for... 
for the facts, for the physical factor. He's he's the type of player that he would like. Abdul Loka, uh, Abdul the Corey, Abdullahi the Corey. That's it. Watford. I mean, a lot of Arsenal fans have talked talked him up. I mean, I highly rate him as a boxer, box midfielder. I think it's someone like that we need alongside Torreira, if we're being honest. A bigger upgrade on, again, Granit Xhaka, but I'll get on to him in my player ratings. And uh, other than that, I look forward to um, the game against Burnley. Now, back to, now we go to the player ratings. For me, Ingo Martinez made one good save at the near post in the first half. Um, won't really test it as such. He flapped at a, a, a Ryan Fraser across in the business end of the game, which he got away with. He got away with another um, flap where he actually punched it into the attacker and it went wide, so that saved our grace. So, overall, I've, I'm going to mark him 7 out of 10. You know what? I'm going to start doing halves. And I'm going to give him 7 out of 10. We go to the back four. As it was picked. Bellerin. Um, he got forward once in that first half. And whipped in a delicious cross. No one at the end of it. Um, he looked solid. He looked like he was getting back into. The swing of things. Going forward. He was always honest. And defensively. <clears throat> I thought he stood firm. You know, I really thought he st stood firm. And um, I'll have to mark him down as a seven and a half. At the back, Squadron Mustafi, he gets an eight. He, his tackles were on point. He was a colossal in the air. And he covered ground when needed to. And spraying more forward passes than Ozil. I mean... Says it all about our number 10. Well. And then he got injured in that second half. For a collision with um, Martinez. Where he landed on his ankle. Where he was really hurt. But again. He won't be out for a long term. He'll be out for days. And um, if not fit against Bournemouth. He should be fit for the home game against Newcastle. That's if he's selected. But overall. I'm giving him an 8. Uh, Socrates didn't really put a foot wrong he was tidy on the ball when called upon and um, yeah he did his job overall to a T Socrates gets an 8 out of 10 our left back Man, man of the match and rightfully so Bakari Saka what can I say another Nigerian descent like myself and that's a privilege but on the pitch he was up and down that wing he was making tackles putting in crosses he linked up well with Martinelli and um Caused Bournemouth with all sorts of problems in that first half. They, them two together, they were causing all sorts of trouble for Bournemouth on their right. And to think that the pair of them are teenagers, only 18. The future bud well for Bakari Saka. And he gets a man of the match reward, and rightfully so, he gets a nine. I'm going to move on to the midfield. I thought Grandosi was fabulous. He took responsibility, got on the ball more, demanded the ball, drove Arsenal forwards, and I thought, you know what, this guy, he will have a future in the world of football. As long as he releases the ball on time. And I am hope, Mikel Arteta, I hope you do coach that out of him, where he holds on to the ball too long and makes stupid fouls at times but other than that I like Grandozzi 
I do like Guendouzi and he has definitely got a future as a captain. All he has to do as a footballer is stop with the stupid, stupid um, naivety at times by getting fouled, arguing with referees. Just concentrate on your football and concentrate on working on where you're not good at releasing the ball. You know, concentrate and releasing the ball quicker. And that's something Arteta needs to get a hold of you of. That's so why he needs to get hold of you by the scruff of the neck and say, you know what? We're going to stay behind for training and you are going to learn when to pass the ball. And I want you doing it quickly. So, yeah, I'm not going to knock him too tough. He had a great game. Nine for Grindosi. Although Saka edges it for me in terms of the man of the, what, man of the match um, reward. Uh, I'm going to go for Shaka now. Now, I'm, I know how I feel about Shaka. I mean, like him, like Kalaznic, Mustafi, they were the write-offs. They were the ones that we demanded as fans that they needed to go. But they've put in performances. And he's one of those who's put in the performances. His performance levels have gone up a bit. And... He's, he's putting on his performance, driving with the ball, which you don't associate with Shaka, but he's doing it. He's improving in that. He's he's always had a long range pass, you know. Although at times he did, he does give the ball away. I think he gave the ball away once, or maybe twice. But he, yeah, he had a real steady game, and I thought he was superb off the ball and putting in tackles and um, covering ground as well and sensing the danger so and his awareness was was there to be seen so overall I'll give Shaka an 8 right the mid um, the attacking three in front of the midfield two I'll start off with Pepe hmm he could have um he could have done a little bit more for me. You know, I see him having a shot where he not made um <clears throat> a defender in the first half. On the right, he's cut inside and he's just, instead of to um lay off an assist, he decides to shoot for himself and it was a poor decision. Other than that, he's got a lot of trickery, but again, he still needs to do a bit more for me. I mean, this guy well, this guy is an incredible footballer who will light up the league once he gets that pre-season training under his belt. My word, we have one hell of a footballer. He's got it all. He's just got to. He's just got to use it. He's got. He's got to know when to use the pace, when to shoot, when it's time to get past a man. And he, and other than that, he is a complete footballer. But at this moment of time. The performance says otherwise. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. In the middle. Who was in the middle? Joe Willock. Yeah, he had a save for the first goal. Where he turned to the defender. Ran at the Bournemouth defence. Laid it off to... Um, I think Martinelli. And from there, Martinelli lays it off to Shaka With that blockbuster of a goal. He had, he had a lot of legs up and at that pitch. Never stops running. Joe Willock. And um, and he knew when to release the ball on time. He's another one who likes to hold on to the ball when running with it. Not for me. I thought his end product was quite sharp. And, that, and that's a sign that he will improve as a footballer. Joe Willock, you get an eight. Uh... On the left, Martinelli. Well, what can I say about this guy? His work rate off the ball, magnificent. Fantastic. Um, complete A1. Um, on the ball, he looked after it the best way he can. I mean, his best game so far was possibly against Chelsea away in the game that we drew 2-2. Uh... He was always dangerous 
again, him, his combination with Saka was superbly magnificent. They gave the right, I think they gave the right back something to think about all first half and he played his part and he played a major part in the second half as well. And he was not, he's not afraid to get them, get on the ball and take um, defenders on. Yeah, I'll score him seven and a half, I think. Or do I give him an eight? Ah, oh, let me give him an eight. Up top, Eddie Nketiah. Yeah, eight. Worked hard, scored his goal. Uh, pressed defenders down on the ball, even the goalkeeper. I mean, in that second half, he forced an error from Steve Cook, who was, who was part of a boom of defenders defence that were trying to pass casually from the back and he falls that error from Steve Cook which conceded um, a corner to our to our boys the Arsenal and um, yeah he never stopped working hard and he was always keen to get onto the ball and hold it up and bring players into play so he gets a good 8 for me substitution Rob Holding I've got to give him a 7.5 Coming in for Mustafi in that circumstances. I mean, he could have been found rusty. He could have been could have been tested a lot by Solanke and Wilson, and um, he stood his own. So in that praising, he gets um, a seven and a half. Um, who else came on? Can anyone tell me who came on? Oh, Sabeos. Yeah, it was it was magnificent to see him again, and the way he was driving with the ball, looking after the ball, you know, playing those through passes, and again, like I said, he looked after the ball, looked around him, he was aware of where the yellow shirts are, and he kept finding the yellow shirt with a pass, simple, basic passing, and that's what we asked for, and he's been told by Ateta, if you really want to get into my side, then you've got to work hard, and when he hasn't got the ball, he showed me that he's prepared to work hard to get it back. So, I'll give him a six and a half. Don't know if I can give him a seven. Who else came on? Anybody else? I'm sure there was someone who, who came on. Someone, um... Someone, um, shout me and leave a message or a comment leave a message or a reminder of the first substitution but I think we did have another substitution though oh I can't remember the, the third one but he came he must have came on and he must have done the job himself who do we have on the bench I don't think Lacazette came on No, I said I think it was um, I think we did have three substitutions that came on to my memory. Other than that, <clears throat> for me as a fan, I'm going to give the travelling fans who turned up in their droves despite the wet, miserable, cold weather up in Bournemouth. They get a 10 out of 10. They sung their hearts out. They sung. They sung. No, they sung and chanted their hearts their hearts out for ninety minutes. They could have been at home watching it on the TV, doing something else, but they turned up in their numbers and filled up their end as they always do. The away fans of Arsenal, well done to them. Arteta, yeah, I'll give him an eight and a half for. The basics he'd done. He um, got it spot on to a T. Especially in the first half. His tactics were on point. He had players in the right position. Performing to, performing to their strengths. Playing in their position. So they were allowed to um, perform to their strengths. Play with a freedom. And with a joy. And you saw that in the first half. And Arteta gets the complete credit for me. On that, so I'll give him a eight and a half out of ten. <sighs> Anyone else I ain't mentioned the ref? 
he gets a, he gets a free. Just he's just lucky to get a free with me, and I'm normally cold with referees, but he can have a free. Though there was not many bad ta challenges as such, he, he was. Although I will say he had to book Shaka for time wasting, and then there was a naughty tackle by. I think he was um, a Liverpool player. Yeah, a Liverpool player who's a lonely at Bournemouth gave one of our players a dirty kick in, and yeah, he deserved his yellow card. Uh, it will come to me. What's his name? Cook. Something Lewis Cook. I think it might have been. If it's not Lewis Cook, is um. Oh, it'll come to me. I'm kicking myself here. How can I not know this? He's got a wand of a left foot, and yeah, he deserved to be booked for what he did. But other than that, it weren't that sort of naughty game. It was played at a good um, spirit and a good cup condition as well. I mean, cup tradition. So yeah, referee gets a free still. That's how I feel. Other than that, please do, and I stress, do subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate the love and the blessing that you give me, yeah? And hit the thumbs up button. Like it up. Give it that like. Hit that like button. That's where the thumbs up are. Hit the, I want to see many thumbs up, yeah? And if you've got anything to say, say it at the bottom of the, um, say it at the bottom of the comment section, yeah? Other than that, guys, it's been peaceful talking to you guys from all over the world, associating with supporting Arsenal, yeah? No matter how you support Arsenal, wherever you go to games, whether you watch it on your TV, get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, or whatever you do, yeah? You're the same. We're all the same, <coughs> you know? Some of us weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouths. But other than that, Arsenal fans, enjoy your evening. I'm out. Peace and blessings. DLG repping.